What is up, Grinder School? This is Pocket Air. Today we, uh, today I'll be kicking off a new series beyond ABC Stats, and we're actually going to jump right in to this because I answer a lot of questions that you guys might have and kind of explain uh, what the series is going to cover. So, again, let's jump right in. So what is this series about? In this series, we will be exploring stats that many players do not currently incorporate onto their HUD. And this is just kind of from my experience, and I go into more detail uh, regarding this here in a bit, but uh, just from my experience as a coach and seeing uh, many, many different people's uh, setups for their, for their HUDs. So the next question, don't I just need the basic stats on my HUD? And I respond to that uh, with, as the games continue to go harder, you should be seeking, well, we all should be seeking to add any additional edges that we possibly can to our arsenal. So um, I just think, you know, the games aren't getting any easier, and we need to uh, definitely do what we can as, as students of the game to stay ahead of the the, uh, the the general population out there. And the last question is how much can these additional stats really help me? Is it worth the effort? And I respond it is absolutely worth the efforts. can't type. Um, once you are able to correctly understand and incorporate these stats into your game you can certainly add a couple big blinds per 100 to your win rate. And that is, I believe that 100%. I, I've, I've seen the difference that uh, some of these stats can make under, you know, if you're using them properly, as this says, you can, you can definitely boost your win rate. So series breakdown. In this episode, we are, after the intro, we're going to analyze the stats that we'll be covering throughout the series. And this is just kind of a primer, and I really want to make sure. I know in one of my videos a while back, I kind of covered some of the HUDs or the stats that we're going to cover, but I really want to be sure that you guys have at least a couple uh, paragraphs explaining the uh, just uh, the ideas uh, behind incorporating these into your into your gameplay. And I do give some uh, examples. So episode two will be uh, will build a HUD that incorporates these stats, and I use Holder Manager. I know the st I do have students that have Poker Tracker and maybe in the forums uh, for those that have. I mean, you should still follow along for episode two, even if you have Poker uh, Tracker. But uh, I, I will post the. Uh, equivalent poker tracker stats because I know some of them in poker tracker are actually uh, a bit they're actually pretty frustrating to find a lot of times so um, but uh, even if you have poker tracker definitely watch episode two oops let me go back one so in episode three and beyond, because I really don't know how many episodes the series is going to incorporate, it's really kind of up to you guys and the feedback that I get. But I am planning on at least having two or three live play videos to make sure we emphasize and cover all of these stats. Uh, I really don't want to end the series until I feel that we've, uh, you know, in each video we've really, in each live play video, I'm sorry, we've... Uh, um, been able to demonstrate them so that's kind of what it says live play videos that will demonstrate how I use these stats in my everyday play so in this video we will be covering stats that from my experience as a coach I have found many players are not using for some time as I continued uh, to bring on students I was pretty lenient in terms of a student's HUD. I figured it was something that they had grown accustomed to, and as long as they had the basic stats, such as VPIP, PFR, flop CBAT, 3BAT, full to steal, steal, etc., I should be fine with it. 
Um, I guess I kind of looked at HUDs. Uh, I guess I kind of looked at them as the equivalent of a live player's like a live player's wardrobe. Some live players like to wear hoodies, some live players like to wear sunglasses, and you know, I didn't want to just jump in and change their HUD around. So I then discovered, although I was turning losing players into winning players and boosting overall win rates as a whole, there were many situations that I knew we could have done uh, better given the proper data uh, using some of these additional non-ABC stats that we're going to cover in this series. How did I know this? Well, because my personal HUD has these stats and I was using them, you know, I've been using them for some time to exploit opponents on a daily basis. So, on to the stats. The first one, believe it or not, and I know some of you do have 4-bet. I know, uh, and I also want to say very quickly that I have went through this entire process with a lot of my students and we've customized their HUD to their liking. Um, now obviously that's uh, the pay me by the hour coaching, so you guys won't, get, you guys might not, uh, well, in episode two when we do create our HUD, you might not get the exact HUD that you wanted, but you can definitely massage it a bit and, um, you know, bring it to your liking. So first at four bet. Now, this is probably one of the borderline stats that most, uh, I, I put this, I put, I know everybody has 3-bet, um, but I put 4-bet between the ABC and the, um, some of the more advanced stats, I guess. Um, so, if you guys do have this, just kind of bear with me. So, 4-betting, if an opponent is 4-betting 7% or more, you can be certain that they have either a polarized range or they're four betting a wide linear range. On the other hand, if an opponent is four betting under 3%, he is very likely to be holding, or he isn't very likely to be holding a weak hand and deserves respect. So that's four betting. And I mean, for the most part, this is pretty straightforward. Um, if you take anything out of this slide, just remember 7% or more is very high, um, and 3% or less is, uh, you should definitely be giving your opponents a lot more respect and, you know, not 5 bet, five betting light. The next stat is fold to 4 bet, and I don't see this on too many people's HUDs. And I think it's important, and here's why. Uh, an example, if I notice an opponent 3-betting 10% or more from a certain position, I immediately check the statistic. If they are folding to a 4-bet 67% or more, I am likely to play back at their wide 3-betting range by 4-betting light with suited kings and aces, basically hands with blockers. On the other hand, if the opponent never folds to so a 4-bet, I am much more likely to increase my 4-bet value range as well as call their 3-bets with my good hands. So like, you know, king-queen suited, ace-queen, nines, etc. And these are basically hands that just can't stand a 5-bet. So obviously, someone 3-betting 10% of the time, that's, that's just an insanely wide 3-betting range. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to just check this stat on your HUD and kind of see, see what your options are. Uh, really, really maybe play back at them and cap their range by, by throwing in some light 4-bets. So that should definitely be the takeaway from this slide. So the next stat is race post-flop. And this is mainly on the flop. So this is anytime someone raises, you know, and we're more or less talking heads up here, but anytime someone raises your uh, continuation bet on the uh, on the flop, or maybe they check raise, but uh, either way, so whenever just any type of flop raise, 
So here's an example. If I continuation bet an opponent and he raises me, this is the stat that I use to help determine the range that he is raising with. If he is raising under 10% of, of his range, I'm likely to give him a lot of respect. If the opponent is raising 20% or more of the time over a decent sample, I am far more likely to call or re-raise with a wider range as they are likely raising with anything that hits the board. So, in it, in an, I have in parentheses here, top pair, second pair, draws, etc. You know, as this gets, we all know that we're going to improve on a flop about 33% of the time. So, if they're raising 20% or more of the time, uh, it's just, you know, it's not their premium or monsters that they're raising with. They're raising with just, you know, a large portion of the range that just hits the board in some way. So the next stat is full two post flop raise, and this is again mainly on the flop. So a 2218 opponent opens from early position and it folds around to me on the button. I call and the blinds fold. The flop comes, three of hearts, four of clubs, seven of clubs. He continuations, continuation bets. Because this flop misses his early position range so often, this would be a perfect opportunity to check this stat. If I find he folds 65% or more to a flop raise, I am very likely to raise him in this situation. I can simply rep so much more on this board than he can. So I think this kind of speaks for itself. Uh, this goes back to ranges and if you guys recall the video that I originally, uh, my, my range versus range video that I did with Deb, you can kind of go back and look at that. But when a, uh, this is just one of those, in this example, this is a situation where if he's opening, open, opening from early and he's a fairly competent looking player, uh, with a BPIP and PFR of 22.18, then a flop like this just isn't going to hit his range. And we can definitely rep a lot more uh, nutty type hands, you know, if we're on the button, maybe we're flatting a pocket pair or a suited connector or something like that. So extremely profitable. Definitely keep an eye on this. Uh, if you take anything away from this slide, take away the fact that uh, we're looking for, I mean, this is still a micro, so we do want this percentage to be fairly high, um, maybe even 68% or so uh, before we really start playing back at them. And remember with all these stats, it's always better to have some type of equity, you know, even here a uh, on the three of hearts, four of clubs, seven of clubs, maybe a backdoor uh, uh, straight or something. So double barrel frequency. So although I find a lot of people have flop continuation betting, um, well, most everybody has that. Um, the double barrel frequency, which is the CBET turn, uh, not too many people are using that from my experience, and I think it's a very important stat, and here's an example of why. If an opponent CBETs the flop a large percentage of the time, 70% or so, but he only continues on the turn 40% or less of the time, I am likely to float him on the flop with a wide range. On the other hand, if there isn't a large gap between their flop and turn c-betting frequency, or they have a very tight, uh, or they're very tight on the flop, I am far less likely to continue without a decent hand. And this one again kind of speaks for itself. The idea is the wider they are continuation betting, on the flop, you know, the more junk they have in their range. And the a lot of times if their turn C bet is far less, they're one and dunning. So they're giving up after they bet uh, most of their uh, entire range, which includes mostly trash. Uh, so by floating them, they aren't going to C bet the turn much. And then you can therefore take away the pot uh, when, they, when they check to you on the turn.
So these last two stats are two of my favorites. And the first one here is check fold. And an example of this is if an opponent checks instead of continuation betting after opening preflop, I immediately check the check fold stat. If they are folding at 70 plus percent of the time after raising, I'm sorry, if they are if they are folding 70 percent of the time, I had a typo here, after checking, so if they see bet and then check, I will be stabbing very frequently with a very wide range. This is money plain and simple. I also use this stat to maximize value against opponents who almost never fold after checking. So an example is they like to slow play medium strength hands, top pair, uh, or maybe second pair, or calling stations. Because if I know they check and they sit there and call down, obviously I'm not betting half pot with a, with a big hand. I'm going to be betting uh, a lot bigger so that I maximize my value. And I use this stat to determine that. So the last one in our, our uh, stats here is bet versus miss continuation bet. And this one's like the check fold stat. If I check a flop instead of continuation betting, I use the stat to help determine how often opponent, an, an opponent will stab against me. This helps me adjust, uh, adjust my calling range. Obviously, if they are stabbing 60% or more of the time, they have a lot of air in their range, and I should be calling them down with a wider range. I also use the stat to maximize value. And this is against a, an opponent. Uh, an example is against an opponent who folds to a lot uh, of double barrels. So, for instance, let's say we have a... Um, an opponent who I can who always calls the flop a large percentage of the time, say eighty percent of the time, but he gives up on the turn to a continuation bet. However, we know that if we check to him on the turn, and well, we check the stat, and we know if we check to him on the turn, he has a, a high percentage of the time he's going to stab with his entire range. Well then instead of double barreling it may very well be better to um, to just go ahead and check to him on the turn like we're giving up and let him stab. So that's another way you can use the stat. Excellent. So with that we are uh, I think we're going to head over to episode 2 and hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode two. We will be creating our, um, well, we will be constructing our HUD and incorporating some of these stats. And I'll kind of show you guys the layout that I kind of like, and uh, you guys can follow along. And yeah, I'll see you guys here in the next week or so.